Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Look at it. He says, to, he says, I wrote to you in an epistle not to company with. How many people know that there are people that, that are in the church that are like that? They just, you know, that's what they, that's what they discuss. Ah, you know? Ah, man. I brought down that sister. They call it broke breaking down. He said, when you hear something like that, ah, he said that brother or, or the sister is talking. So that's what we do. That's you know, that's what it is. That's what's raining now. He said, we just don't come, don't come in. He calls your phone. Don't pick up. Amen? 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 He says, don't come in. Because he says, Lord, you know people always say things like people like, people like, let me say this. People like, um, how do I put it? They like spiritual things. Someone just come and say, Mmm. The Lord is saying to me now, everybody open the eye. Who's going to see? Who's going to see? Tell me, tell me. God is saying that. They don't know that the word of God is God speaking to them. So if God was standing in front of you, you say, don't call me with fornicators, idolaters, evil collectors, people that like money. He says, these are people that they are not in your friend zone. You know, there's some, there's some men or some women that people always say this, that you friend zone. You know, the person buys you flower, buys you gifts, and when you're saying thank you, you say, ah, you are such a nice brother to me. That's the friend zone. Of life. They zone you into a place. You can't come out without it again. That's it. So, you hear something, oh, your wife will be such a oh, wonderful lady. After I just bought your iPhone 4, you know, or iPhone 7 or 9, whichever one is the new one. He said, those people, this one we are talking about, they should not even be in your friend zone. So even people that you put in the friend zone, you are careful. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen and amen. All right. I want us to round up here so that we, I want us to round up this part so that we will go. He says, those who are for covetous, idolaters, those who are railers. One of the things that we watch out for, how does this person talk? Railers. How does he talk about spiritual authority? How does he talk to people? Especially, how does he talk to people on that day? You know, you know the word of a man. I, I said this one day. I said that riches, money doesn't change a man's character. It only shows us what poverty is for us. How does, you know, we really know people when they are in position of authority. How do people talk? You know, because remember, the person that you're going to get married to is going to be familiar with you. I mean, how many people know that when you get married, you're going to be familiar? You can say to me, you know, I can do this to my wife now, but imagine when I was trying to ask her out. I can't do it. You know, I can do that. I, not, that's my man, man. You know? But I can do that now. Because we are familiar now. But the first day I saw her, she was a music minister. Ministering, she was invited to the church I was part of, the church that I was a member of then, to come and lead us in worship this special music minister. And I heard the voice, and I stopped hearing the Lord. I mean, I was just, eh? human being, and I was like that. You think that ah, spiritual brother? Because the two names are the very spiritual brother. I was God. And I was telling my, my friend, my friend, I didn't hear him. That, like is she minister? That is she. And all I just saw was ah. You know, at that time itself, you know, because she was a superstar, as it were, she was a worship minister everywhere, everybody was going around her and all that. I could not have me, that I'm not married to her, that I'm talking about. I could not go near her, I was shy, I was a little bit shy. Yeah, she used to be a minister, she used to go everywhere, very popular. We weren't married. And my brother said, let's go and meet her, I said, no, no, you know how these celebrities be, you know? So let's, she said, go, let's go and say it was a very wonderful thing. And I just said, <laughs> Ask her! As in, as in I just bought my phone, like, I was doing that in straight away. I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> hey! The same person, are you know what? <laughs> what am I saying? The person you're married to, you'll be familiar with the person. So watch the way the person relates with people. How does he talk about his mom? How does he talk about my mother, bastard? Ah! Ah! When you hear people talking like that, you know, they will talk to you well. They will talk to you well. <laughs> Always, when you want to know the worth of a person, listen to this. Check how they view 
with those under them. That's how you know the word of life. You know, in fact, with those above them, because of the learned honor, depending on their culture, you see them very, very respect. How do you how does he deal with the security man at his office? How does he deal with the colleague? How does he deal with his younger brother, younger sister? How does she deal with her neighbor? How does she deal with her mom? How does she deal? Because when it comes, you see, one of the things you do not want for life, as this scripture says, is a realer. You know what a realer is? That's what the scripture says, is a realer. Because you are a Christian, words matter to you. And like, let me say this well. As a Christian, in marriage, we're going to be hearing this later. We're going to take a better one anyway. But as a Christian in marriage, ensure that your words build up the people around you. What do they do? Train yourself. It is the modus operandi of our kingdom to build up the people around you. That is what we have we have imbibed from God. Ephesians 1 verse 1. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. What is the real original rendering in the Greek? It says, we give God praise who speaks well of us in Christ. God speaks well of you. We learn good speaking from the Lord. Hallelujah. When we, that's why I said, we are Christians. We don't take our, and that's why I would like to say this, but we don't take our role models from people in the world. You know, Someone was asking me one day, Pastor, what is your take on music? I said, there are three germs of music. There is gospel music, which talks about the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is secular music, which is just talking about things that happen in the environment. You know, love, heartbreak, getting a job. I don't even know songs like that. Songs that are talking about, and there is what we call worldly music, which is... um, which talks about lewd things and is against what you believe. I saw a Christian, you know, would, you know, at a wedding, you sing wedding songs. I don't expect at a wedding you're coming with holy spirit. Like, you know, it's a wedding, you know, so it's a wedding, it's an occasion. So let's just get married and go to church. But, you know, at a Christian, at a wedding, you play wedding songs about wedding in church, in your normal life, you play. Christian songs. But the song, the kind of songs you don't sing or deal with are the kind of ones that promote what you don't believe. Mm-hmm. Promote what you don't believe. You know, there's a song right now that's in the world that even Christians, I see them talking about the song, but the song is promoting alcohol. The song is promoting raping women. The song is promoting that, you know, you know, um, doing evil things to people. And I see people dealing with it. Now, I don't even know how we got here. But all I'm trying to say to you right now is those things affect your mind. It even has a dance. And people dance it. Why? It's communicating something. I don't even know how do we get the pressure. You know, but it's communicating something that you don't believe. Take your hands. If the person that sang the song was saying that this is how I behave when I'm drunk and I'm mad and I do like this, and I do like this, he <laughs> said, uh, you're, you're just coming. But people don't know, even Christians. And then I, I tell them that you're sending across a wrong signal to the world and to your mind. You say that this is how I behave when I'm, I've mixed alcohol together and I am now mad. I do like this, I do like this, I do like this, I do like this. <laughs> And then you see Christians doing the same thing too. I don't pressure you need to get me back on track because I do not get it. But the truth is, this you're a Christian, words and what you endorse really matters. Amen. 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 He says, avoid those that are real as what they say, because what people say, what people say around you and how you talk affects people. Amen. Amen. You know, now again, and so Christianity, as a Christian, you listen to music, but you watch what you listen to because the lyrics have effects. You're a Christian. Words are powerful. 
cannot affect, you cannot, have, uh, you know, you cannot uh, afford to have anything come into your space. Because for you, you know, people don't think that it's that serious. But on the day when it looks like your world has crashed, you know, because your mind has always been doing like this. You know what you can say? Maybe if I go and take alcohol, I'll feel better. You say, Pastor, no, I can't. Your mind is a computer. It's based on information you put in. Amen and amen. Okay, I don't know how to go there. I'm sure God will pass me some way. But abusive. And right now, watch what people say. Watch what you say around people. Build people up with your words. Build people up in faith. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Now, the last part I will take, and then we will go into a break because I've used this first part to talk solely about relationships. The next part is actually to talk about marriage. So, this is actually the dating part. Amen and amen. amen. What role does physical attraction play? Yes. You see, in marriage, you are not marrying, let me say it this way. Now, this is where you need to pay attention. You are, you are not marrying as a persecution for the Lord. <laughs> like it's not, you know, you know, I, 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 you know, I laugh a lot because as a Christian and as a pastor, I hear a lot of things. You know, <laughs> a lady came to me. I said, you know what, Pastor, I have something to tell you. There is this man God says I should marry. God says, I don't like him. I have nothing, nothing. But you know what? I love the Lord. I think this is God is putting me through a test. You know, because you know, there's this sense of people always trying to impress the Father, like me. So you want to go to this special for the Lord? You must really love the Lord. I, I, you know, I, I don't like the man. The way the man is, eh? even when he stands in front of me, I'm not. But. I just feel that it's a persecution from the world. I just feel that this is what God wants me to do. Um, it's not. Oh. So there's a place of physical attraction in the person that you marry. Amen. Amen. You know, interestingly, physical attraction to faith, but it's important that we talk about it. You can't say you want to marry someone that you see and you want to vomit. <laughs> you know, we need to say all these kind of things. You can't, like, the person that you marry, at least you guys must understand each other. Like, you must be able to communicate. Because when you marry, a little thing, you know, causes issues. It's important we talk about it. You'll be physically attracted to the person. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Let me say this. Although this is supposed to be the one song I will say. What role does sex play? Like I said before, sex is right in form, but only in marriage. You know, in marriage, sex will no longer be something that you just do for all. It now becomes, let me say it's a commandment. We'll see it later in the sex part of it. That the Bible calls it thief. If you defraud your partner. And we need to talk about all these things because you know. If one of the things I realize that people always shy about it in talking about, even among Christian in the Christian community, is um, things like sex. And you know the funny thing? The people in the local in the church always go and ask about this same thing called sex from other people. Or they go and watch YouTube. Or they don't they, people will always get their ideas that that's why we're doing this. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's only, it, 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 it's in the context of marriage. Before you're married, you're instructed from scriptures to flee. Amen and amen. amen. I think I should end this. Let me look through it. Are I think I should. Can a Christian marriage break up? Can a Christian relationship break up? Can someone give me the answer? Yes. 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 He can. If the boss is enter, you realize there is the wrong boss. You don't get out. If it's continuing the journey. Amen? amen. Such amen. amen. You know, people, and that's the funny thing. Because we are in a world of, I, have to, I propose, and it is online. I got the ring at the shopping mall where he knelt down. You know, I really appreciate the video of one man that if you saw what's going on in real life, 
where a woman proposed to him, the man said, I'm not doing it. Like, it looks like, uh, why I think God put that little girl of me, because I've always been thinking about this. <laughs> People think that you're doing someone evil if they think someone proposes to you and say no. You are, you are actually working in love for the both of you. Because the fight that you'll be fighting. Amen? You know, but it looks like it's the wrong thing. I'll, you know, I, I, I heard people are abusing someone that they proposed to and said no. A man proposed to a woman and said, I said no. Let me just, a little tips for guys. Please, have a relationship and a friendship with the person you want to propose to before you propose. Don't just assume. <laughs> All right, so I say he's not speaking of the Lord. Mm. Can a Christian relationship break up? Yes, it can. Again, how it breaks up, the manner, the most the Christian. But look at the story of Matthew chapter 1. It's the story of Joseph and Mary. Joseph was espoused, as the word, that's what we are using as this, was espoused to be married. So, uh, what's in the name? Mary. And Mary came one day and said she's pregnant. Eh? Who owns the pregnancy? Mary said, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it looks like a small deal. If you don't read it through, a woman, you know, me and I, 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 eh, eh, I will call the community. Come and see you. Because you don't think about it this way, but in the Jewish community, um, getting pregnant is a really big deal. And for you to tell me that I'm, you're pregnant and nobody taught you the matter. But see what he said. He said, verse 19. He said, he, he said he was going to disengage her, not publicly to put her to open shame. Even when you want to disengage a Christian relationship, do it in love. Amen. 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 Don't be rude, petulant, and just the person that you said without you cannot sleep. <laughs> Four months ago. And you're just brash about it. You know, my friend was telling me a story. He said, these two people were dating, Christian dating. On the guy's birthday on Facebook, he wrote, you are my leader, my base. He now wrote, you are my commando. So, <laughs> so he said, he said, he was warning his mind, how can a woman be giving accolades to a man and be calling him commando? <laughs> then, a few months later, she came and said, I'm not interested in this man anymore. The, 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 you know, he, he now brought it up and said, did you not say this man is your commando? Brother, oh, pastor, leave that, leave that, leave that. Why, why, why did I say all this? You know, I said it to say to you, in Christian relationships, things can go wrong. And going on with that story, the woman was mad, petulant, all oh, this. The same person that was your commando, your this, your that, your this, your that. I'm saying to you, Never walk outside of love, even when breaking up a Christian relationship. Amen? Amen. Never. There's no need to. Say this. Love, love. is always, always God's wisdom. God's wisdom. Say love. Love, love, love is always, always God's, wisdom. God's wisdom. The final one we we'll take today for this session. What do I do if my parents don't agree? The person I want to marry. Apart from the time where which parents are trying to live their lives through you, I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You should marry a lawyer. And all this kind of thing. Now, when they say, listen to their listen to their sentiments, listen to the points that they raise up. Be be meticulous enough to listen to why the person that gave back to you would not want you to marry somebody, knowing that they love you. Meaning, knowing that your parents no. love you. Don't just no. Listen. Hear the point. In fact, take it to prayer. Analyze it. If you're in a hurry and they say to me, stop. Take out some time. Remember, I told you, in all of this, we're talking about dating. Never be in a look at your neighbor. Say haste Please. makes mistakes. Haste, Haste makes mistakes. Don't be in a hurry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, if they say no, relax. 
The only time when they say no, and that reason is actually you saying that they want to live their lives through you. I've had it in real life situation happen. Yeah, and I've seen, I, I saw it happen also by King David. A woman wanted to get married to somebody, had already heard from the Lord that God gave the person that she married, and then the, 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 the mother said no. And then, you know, this happened to me personally, and I said, I said to her, because of love and honor and respect, don't get married now. Wait for one year before you get married. And that one year, you're giving it as time for your mom and your dad to actually come, okay, mom, for your mom to come around. And we pray about it that God will soften our hearts because this is um, what you want to do. She said, yes, I heard you. And then they postponed the wedding. They told her, they postponed the wedding. I said, no, never try to be rebellious just like that. Mm-hmm. Give time for honor. So I said, go on here. And she actually, and the man, they postponed the wedding for one year. I came back exactly one year. <laughs> Pastor, we're back here, one year. Mommy still says no. I said, I will be the mother and the father of you. Wherever it is you're traveling, wherever it is that you're having that wedding, I and my wife will be there. And that's exactly what happened. Why? You give one year. Anybody that hears us saying that we give one year of honor to mommy and daddy, they will not talk because the woman just was unrepentant. Because she just she wanted to live her life through her daughter. Amen and amen. amen. My point, when you hear they say no, stop and want to know why. Don't just behind and that's why it's important. It's important. The Bible says in the midst, in the in the midst of cancer, there is safety. Never go on an adventure where which everybody you have crossed with, either spiritually say no. Never. Stop and wait and check and ask and be sure. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. Let's stop now. Rise upon your feet and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Rise upon your feet and bless the name of the Lord. I can't hear anything. 